Ji. Uh, Asim, first of all, I, I'll begin by saying thank you for this absolutely wonderful film. Uh, and I would say it's a very, it's a quietly radical film in terms of both content and form. And from what I saw, there were three acts. The first is, you know, a certain nostalgia for tradition. And then there is, uh, you know, there's a slight uh, critique of patriarchy in that. And there is, uh, you know, then there is the flood. And after the matriarch's passing, the house falls into utter disrepair. And uh, in the end, uh, you know, the, a brick by brick dismantling of the structure to basically try to strengthen the foundation. And the house is left to a chokidar. And I'm wondering if the house is India. And we can take a guess about who the chokidar is. Is that by design or am I reading too much? It's a political allegory, much like Sean extends all that breeds or like Pushpendra Shepherdess. That's by design, right? Uh, I mean, not completely, probably. Uh, but to, to an extent, yes. yes. Okay, okay, okay. Would you like to comment more on that? Not to forget the, the photo of the founding father in the end, the, the original patriarch, and mm -hmm. uh, the founding father I would call actually, and it's taken and it's uh, a kind of uh, lovingly kept, you know, the memory is kept to be kept alive. So all this is part of the design of the film, I think. Yeah, but I mean, at the same time, it was all sort of coming from what I had already seen happening in like quite recently. Uh, I was sort of responding to things I was seeing around me and even the last sort of seeing the picture being taken down, it had actually happened in some way. So the whole structure also sort of comes from there. Okay, okay. So it all falls very neatly. Yeah. Right. Uh... So any anyone uh, I'll I'll come to more questions later. Anyone wants to ask more questions? Uh, yes, please. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, you it's a nice movie, and it has already been seen at uh, many festivals uh, around India and across the world. Uh, if uh, like uh, that, uh, mommy Mumbai, uh, mommy Mumbai. So actually, I just wanted to ask, like, what these professional are these professional actors or they are uh, theater actors or what the kind of the cast is I any mean, amateur or they are just common people who have been trained in a workshop for a month or two and then uh, taken about this uh, movie. I mean, uh, so, uh, I, I just like the uh, that uh, movie is very I mean, silent and it's uh, subtle. It has conveyed in a certain manner uh, very few dialogues and dialogues are very I mean, soft spoken and not loud, uh, nothing loud is there. So that is a really remarkable thing about this movie and it uh, conveys the message in a very certain manner. And the, the music is, uh, music speaks for itself. Uh, music is very, I mean, goes, uh, uh, it is uh, uh, very uh, artly uh, woven around the script of the movie and it uh, blends with the Narrative. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The actors, uh, it was in fact uh, a mix of everyone. There was there were theater actors. There were people who had worked in the film. There were people who had uh, done radio, and then a, ma a majority of them were uh, facing the camera for the first time, uh, which sort of comprised of people I had known since childhood, uh, distant relatives, and also people from the village. So, like, probably in the main family, you see three, four actors. There's uh, Abhinav, who plays Guddu. He's a professional actor, the one who's there till the end. Uh, then a couple of them, the one who plays the Choti Chachi in the beginning, uh, they are actors. Then uh, for a lot of the people, I mean, in the family as well, I, <clears throat> I wanted to sort of cast them uh, from the village itself or, you know, around the village. Uh, and I mean, it was tricky to sort of work with that sort of a mix where, you know, at one, one, one hand you have 
the actors who can improvise and who can sort of come up with uh, dialogues and then you have the non actors who uh, on one level they want to sort of they're scared and they want to have dialogues and i didn't write dialogues a lot uh, so you also want to free them in some way so i mean the whole process took some time uh, to figure out how to sort of work with everyone together you mean to say that the main characters were the professional actors or theater actors no, not entirely not entirely it was again a mix okay. can i can i add something how did you uh, you know by nature we are a sort of a melodramatic people we are slightly theatrical our tradition and so theatrical how did you undo that with the actors and sort of get this complete naturalism did you did you work what did you do with them what was your process uh so i mean it sort of kept on happening as we were shooting because i mean the initial days everything was coming off as a little too dramatic uh, especially in the beginning the first couple of days of shooting because we didn't get a chance to do any sort of workshop with everyone because again like they aren't professional actors uh, so it was not fun- functioning in that way uh, until a certain point and then we started shooting and let's say there's someone who's who's been a radio artist before so she has a certain uh, i mean uh, i'm talking about the grandmother uh yeah so she had a certain melodic tone, tone to her voice every time she spoke so we had to sort of you know it took it took a while and then i mean i mean i just kept asking them to talk as they they did with me you know i mean and it took a while for them also to realize what sort of a film this is for everyone for all the actors to also uh understand because i mean the first shot we would we would be taking they would come to me they would be like okay this is the master shot next you will put ots over the shoulder whatever and i i was like no <laughs> this is the only shot uh so it took a while for everyone to uh, get in the flow and but once i mean uh, and it actually happened more smoothly after the second schedule because uh, when we were shooting for the first time the first 10 days everyone was clueless and then after the first schedule rap i sort of edited a first cut rough cut of the footage we had and then everyone sort of you know understood where we have to take it from here in that way so you do uh, you do as to uh, you know the typical tradition of both shooting and editing like your business say has uh, there's no there's none of that uh, hollywood master shot ots close up none of those kind of techniques no match cuts no nothing none of that you deliberately done away with that uh, would you like to talk a little about that as well uh, i mean on one level i sort of we wanted to put some uh, limitations as well in terms of the visual language uh, because i mean even in terms of writing i was constantly trying to do that to sort of do away from do away with the drama with the narrative arc or anything uh, sort of resembling that and i mean there were times when i would be writing a scene and i would very naturally make it dramatic on paper and then i would realize maybe this is not how it would happen you know this is not how it would play out it was also sort of uh, exciting because those are like 3 3 days i mean you see like two decades but on three different days uh, that's it on in 1998 you just see like from one afternoon till till the next then then in 2010 again you see like just the span of so so the idea was things are not really happening on those days things are happening in between so constantly while writing i was trying to sort of you know uh, like it, i remember in the first draft for the second part which is the 2010 bit uh, towards the end there was a slight build up towards you know uh, there's going to be mutton cooked tomorrow uh, everyone is planning to cook mutton tomorrow even there's it's there in the scene as well where uh, abhinav guddu is telling him about the uh, old pictures and all and then he's like he tell mutton and chilling you know so there was like a slight build up to it and then next morning 
there there was some argument between everyone about who's going to cook it and all that and then i mean you know while writing over the next couple of droughts i started sort of uh, i did away with all those as well <laughs> so there was that in writing and then even while we were shooting uh, obviously while while, uh, while we were shooting we were also sort of tempted to shoot some things in certain way but we had to sort of you know we had put some markers for ourselves in the beginning that okay this is how we are going to do it and for those we had certain ideas at that point as well one of which was that this has to look sort of photographic uh, in a certain way uh, especially the first part and then uh, it should feel like you know like like an album like you turn you're turning through someone's photo album uh yeah Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Hi, Anjal. Thanks for the call. So, uh, in this conversation about a movie which is depicting change, but on three days which are themselves unchanging, one of the formal choices that interested me was just how many of the shots were still the camera was moving. And I wanted to know what was the conversation that led up to that, the thought process that led up to that. Uh, how early did you decide that, and was there a time when you were considering maybe having some dynamic camera movements, and what made you decide not to do that? I mean, I would love for Anand to also sort of uh, join in on this and add something, but I mean, you know, on a very basic level this also comes from uh this was sort of coming from how i have sort of learned filmmaking which is you know without any thing uh, i mean just doing things on my own with a camera and a tripod so when you know when i sort of sort of started uh developing uh, this film i mean i always sort of start with point zero where i'm not sort of assuming that you know i'll have this much money or i'll have this much that to sort of be able to make this film it always starts with you know how can i sort of do it with whatever i have in that way and i think due to that sort of limitation and th- uh, the visual language also started stemming somewhere from that uh, till a certain point but then you know i mean with the kind of film this was with the kind of subject we were dealing with it also i mean it just fit together you know uh, and i think anand could probably add i mean i think ajal answered it in the previous question as well that it had to feel like a family album at some point and uh, which i think was one of the major reasons that we chose to be static through the film also i think the film is so much about the house that and not so much about the characters so i mean if your house is the character and the house is not moving as such i mean so i mean i don't think we uh ever we got tempted once to move i think when uh, it's it's where the grandmother is leaving on a rickshaw where initially we had thought that uh, she'd be leaving in a car with someone uh, and we'll be inside the car seeing the house go away but but with discussions we realized that it's her going away from the house and the story is about the house we need to stick to the house in terms of image so i think that was the only temptation once when we wanted to move the camera where we didn't is the is the immobile camera and uh, the placement of the camera i think uh, i i don't know uh, is this like a homage to ozu and uh, especially you know the, the the celebration of the new birth Uh, and people fanning themselves these little gestures so lovingly detailed uh, very much like tokyo story you know where there's a funeral and they people fanning themselves and uh, this seems for also i mean it seems like you know it's he saying something like life is going on and uh, so are you in a way growing up on that lineage am i right or i mean i, I mean not very <laughs> consciously but yes yeah Okay. Okay. So, 
Uh-huh. I mean, uh, it wasn't really sort of <laughs> uh, necessary. I mean, everyone was, I mean, the first five days, everyone was clueless uh, again. Like, because our team was also, you know, like quite a mix, honestly. Uh, there was Anand and then there were a couple more from uh, the same college Anand went to, which is the same woods. And apart from that, we had like, you know, all the cast was from here. And then the crew, there was like, the lightman had come from Patna and they had previously worked on the Bhojpuri films. So, you know, it was very, I mean, it was strange for them also to see like one, for like one hour, we are continuously sort of lighting a shot, which is just the mosquito net, you know. And they would be waiting for like some hero to walk in and sit inside that mosquito net. But I mean, no, it was just this, uh, just just the mosquito net. Uh, so it took a while. I mean, uh, it, like I remember in the beginning, even the villagers, like everyone around, they were very excited to see like, okay, there's gonna there's a shoot which is going to happen here. So they would come visit and see what's happening. But uh, probably by like the second schedule, we had like four schedules in total. By the second schedule, they were like, I mean, <laughs> It's it's normal only. Uh, so it it took a while, but I mean, yeah, I mean, I think everyone then was sort of, even in the crew, they were responding to similar things after a certain point, uh, uh, seeing things uh, in a similar manner. Thank you, sir. Uh, Can you talk about the aspect ratio in the first part of the film and the rest of the bit? Oh, Anand? Oh, I think we've just... <laughs> so, uh, I mean, uh, I think when I first met Achal and we spoke about the film, there was the idea already uh, in place that we wanted to shoot the 1998 part of the first part of the film in four is to three, because a uh, I think on 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 the first initial level it uh, helps us depict different time periods uh, in the sense that okay, uh, 1998 is an academy ratio and then we <laughs> sort of open up as the times change, which, but also I think when we saw the film as a whole, we later realized that how the ratio is also helping us is seeing the house much larger than what it is uh, as you open up the film because you see more of it on a cinema screen as opposed to maybe a laptop or something. So uh, that really helped us space out characters like in the first part you see all the characters are sort of closer to each other in terms of an image even though physically they might be at a greater distance but when you see it as a whole they feel that they're a lot closer which I think also helps narratively uh, what the film is trying to say and there was a conscious choice later which was taken to sort of distance the characters from the space and from themselves, which I think aspect ratio helped us in achieving. Okay. Anything you want to add? Oh, I mean, it's just interesting to see sort of, you know, how the change in aspect ratio also changes the perception of the space. Yeah. You know, you, you're seeing just one house, but in three different aspect ratios and the way the space opens up or just closes in it's it's really interesting so i mean it was sort of interesting to just play around with that as well if i may ask a question can you people hear me 
yeah so i just i just i just really wanted to say that you know to me this kind of a film brings in the whole concept of family in in a in a sense of uh, you know a, a family and geography and history kind of coming together uh and i just find that interplay is so interesting in the current modern times where everything is changing and yet we seem to be wanting to go back i mean the stories that the younger generation you are the you know the generation of people who are now kind of looking back uh to look forward so i just wanted to it's really not a question just a comment how i felt the whole the whole concept of family playing out in 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 the way you actually created the film so i think we need to see and show this film really widely and have conversations around it because the conversations help us go outside of the individual self watching the film because we get all these other voices coming in so just wanted to congratulate you for that and thank you for giving us the opportunity at prithi film club to show this film thank you thank you for showing the film Uh, thank you for making such a beautiful film for us. I caught the screening of Doen also last year here as well, and the shots were amazing there too. And in this film also, quite literally taking Bihar, which is not such an aesthetically pleasing state, but you are making it look so beautiful. And still, that's a great job. I wanted to ask about this that. Uh, gathering all these ideas and thoughts which primarily belongs to our parents and grandparents like quite this movie is not about the family it's as you said that it is about the house how much help did you have in your writing process from the people around you and your family as well i mean uh, a lot in fact i mean uh before before i sat down to write i actually went around talking to everyone and they were also sort of surprised why the sudden interest in everything you know but i mean it was interesting just to sort of uh talk to people i hadn't earlier got a chance to have you know long conversations with especially about you know the past and the house itself and their memories so i was sort of also you know gathering different people's memories of that you know of that space people who were elder to me and people also younger than me and uh i was also constantly looking at a lot of a lot of these pictures which you know a lot of us have in the family and uh and they go back all the way to i mean much before the house as well uh so there was that there was also some uh i remember vcr footage as well uh and even while you know i mean we uh, we wrote we i wrote the first part then we shot it and i hadn't entirely written the complete film uh so we shot the first part and then i started i sat down to write the second part which is the 2010 and i remember we were there for uh, so there was the actual chhat puja which happened anand was also there up uh, some of our crew was there and then 10 days or a week later we were shooting we had our own shoot uh, of the same sort of uh, period like a day uh, during chhat puja and i remember i was also sort of you know i was constantly like with my ears open i was listening to people having conversations and i was there was the, the one scene in, in the film is literally sort of taken as it happened in some way where uh, you see all the the, the two sort of chachas and this uh, neighbor they sit and talk about how much mutton they'll need tomorrow and then it leads to someone having an accident and the whole sort of mood changes uh, it in fact happened a similar sort of conversation happened in front of me while we were there for the chhat puja uh so i mean there was this constant interaction between you know uh, the reality of the reality of that space and the fiction that i was sort of uh, trying to create Anyone else? Anything you 
trying to add, Achal? Something that we missed out on? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Our new film is coming out on 10th. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What about the motivations for making this movie? I think any thing which uh, you got from the background or is any. Sorry. What about the motivations for making such a movie? Like any thing uh, which you got from the background or any inspiration which you got? Or, uh, what were the. Uh, ah. I don't know. I mean, the other films I watch. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah. Yeah, who are your influences? Sorry? Apart from Zoo and Bosha Shen, who are, I mean, let's talk about your influences. Uh, I mean, there's Ozu, there's Bosha Shen, there's Hirokazu Koreda, there's uh, Nuri Jalan and Kirastami and uh, Mia Hans in Love and a lot of them. But mostly, yeah. I think, mostly Asian cinema. East Asian cinema. Right, right. Okay, so it must have been, uh, it must have come from some personal experiences or maybe just uh, like that, or, 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 you know, organic, organically or in natural manner. Uh, yeah, I mean, the content of the film is, I mean, definitely coming from okay. all the personal experiences and whatever I've seen over the years, but the content of it, the language of the film is also coming from the, all the films I've seen and the kind of literature I've read and the kind of language I am sort of also aiming for. What is the now in the pipeline for the future? Sorry? What is now in the uh, pipeline, in the, I mean, in the making or in the future? Any, uh, you want to hear the second film is coming out. It's called Dwin, and we have shot a new film. Uh, I mean, last month. So I mean, yeah. Uh, I still have to edit it. So in probably a few months, in a year. Okay, we look forward to it uh, with uh, your city and, and like. Thank so you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Anna. Yeah, hi. So I don't have any question as such, but I would just like to you know, uh, thank you for making such a beautiful film. Yeah, it felt like uh, I'm in my hometown once again. So it was the most accurate depiction of Bihar I've ever seen on a big screen. So thanks a lot for that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so I just wanted to just, even I wanted to just comment in a sense. I like this film really resonated with me. Like, and you could clearly see like the you like you are the director of the maker. They had some trouble about their roots or like being ruthless because even I maybe I'm not shifted that much as many other people or you also. So I like I've been born and brought up in Pune, Maharashtra, and uh, I have my roots in Uttarakhand. So like that even I have a house where this and it, it really reminded me and it kind of it saddened me, you know, like I many, many people back at home in Uttarakhand they say that if you have the time, you will come back. So maybe even we are at fault and we cannot only blame time. We don't take out we don't take out the time to go back and then we always blame it on someone. So it it opened a new thing for me also, like like we always ask for change. And the house, like sometimes something shouldn't change because there's memories attached to it. Many people, even my family, like <laughs> they are dealing with like selling of the land. So even those small little matters, it opened my eyes because even although I'm so close, like uh, we, I in my college is in Greater Noida, yet I don't find the time to go back. So it, thank you for like for helping me open up such a big part of my mind. And, it also like helped me connect back to my house. So thank you so much. Uh, hello, um, and thank you for the movie. First of all, uh, it provided me uh, a still intellectual experience that I that you know I needed. Um, and what 
what I have is more of an observation than a question. Uh, I believe uh, that while the movie uh, take uh, while the movie takes a stance, it doesn't necessarily revolt against the changing cultural landscape and the ongoing process of migration. Uh, it only attempts to familiarize with uh, familiarize people with the tragic sadness of it, uh, while also acknowledging its um, um, its its um, its inevitability. So, what do you have to say on that? I mean, exactly what you said. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, it was sort of, you know, uh, we didn't want to, I mean, I personally didn't want to, want to, because, I mean, the film is subjective at one level already, because, I mean, I'm making the film. Uh, but, uh, you know, more than that, I didn't want to sort of, uh, get more into the characters and you know how they see things and always wanted to sort of maintain a distance with things so I mean I've tried to sort of you know not comment on anything really first of all it's great movie. Um, my question is, does the script of the movie is available anywhere? Because I really want to know how do you write this? Like, ah, no, I mean, it, it, the script is with me only. Uh, and it's, it's all, uh, it's, it's, it, it wouldn't really make sense to anyone, <laughs> probably. Because, I mean, like, especially for the last part, there's, there was no script. There was just like a note on one page of paper and probably a paragraph which I wrote for Abhinav. Uh, uh, that's it. And, you know, I had to sort of even change how I was writing the script as I went along because in the beginning, I started with a very uh, traditional sort of script where it had everything within uh, all the details and the dialogue, especially uh, what each character is saying. But as we started shooting, I realized this is not going to work, especially with, you know, uh, the non-actors and people who hadn't uh, done acting before. Uh, so, I mean, going ahead, especially for the second part, I only wrote down things which were sort of necessary for the, you know, whatever little there is of the narrative to move forward. You know, little de details here and there, the information uh, one has to sort of convey. But apart from that, I was leaving it all open for the uh, actors and the non-actors to come up with their own uh, dialogues, uh, especially in the second part. And going ahead, I mean, third part, there was literally nothing. Uh, we just, I mean, we, we went there, we had some sort of ideas and already we we are sort of, we have uh, three-fourths of, of our film ready. So we are sort of only building on that in some way in terms of the visual language, in terms of how we are seeing the characters. Uh, apart from that, I mean, uh, yeah. yeah. Also, it is just, also the house as a character, and there is a movie called I think Musafir, in this case, Dilip Kumar. So how that that developed? That you always had that in mind, or that like you started I think, or move forward with it? How was that? Uh, I mean, is one of the very first things which sort of I mean that's where the film started uh, in a way uh, I mean the house was going to be renovated so I wanted to make a film there it started there and then I started think thinking of different things I could sort of make in that house you know just to sort of make a film there uh, so that the house is in some way preserved and then I was playing around with different ideas and I sort of realized that, you know, the very reason I want to make this house, make this film is the house itself. So, I mean, uh, why not sort of try something like this, which is, you know, just the story of the house across seasons, across decades, across time uh, in some way. And <clears throat> it felt, you know, it felt kind of exciting and challenging also to attempt something like that, you know, instead of a regular narrative where 
you know one of the initial discussions we have, we were, we were having was you know whose perspective should it be should it be like a particular character's perspective or should it be like a multi sort of perspective multi uh, character narrative and then i mean but with those i mean i sort of knew where the film could go i mean i could already sort of pictureize it in some way but you know this this perspective was sort of just staying with the house just the house as the protagonist that also sounded very exciting and challenging uh, at that time uh, like even when we had edited the film and it was all ready we were still not sure how people would sort of react to it uh, so i mean yeah So hi Ajay, uh, it's been a while that I wanted to see you in person. So this is online. I'm happy, and I did see Kamalkar, but I really wanted to see it in an audience because I wanted to understand how does it, you know, has it reached the same way uh, that it reaches me. Uh, so I have a question and a comment. Uh, the comment first. Um, I live in a Kamalkar. Right, so there are some kinds of urban spaces as well, where people move out of the country, and um, it's this very forceful attempt by those who revisit to create memories. In fact, that's been going on in my head for the last two three weeks because it's as if the you know so there are those who are left behind who become caretakers and no longer inhabitants of the house. And there are those who come, who visit, and who would want to forcefully create the same so-called "quote-unquote" um, you know happiness or festivity around that that habitation, that thing called home. So amazing film, compliments for that. Uh, my question would be, what is your relationship to the film? Because I think, as someone who understands film or is trying to. Uh, I'm fascinated by how we imagine the film, and I'm wondering how much of intensive discussion do you have with your cinematographer? I'd really love to know that, and the person who's doing sound uh, to, you know, to actually to actualize how you think. Yeah, I love the way there's a window in everything you see. It's almost as if I'm lensing through your window, uh, which is. I mean, Sound very easy on paper, but actually when you implement it, it's a very difficult task. The aspect ratio initially for me was the window through our, the window on the window, the window on the door, the window through the new one. Yeah, so I just want to know how intensive are these discussions before you kind of get into the act of shooting. I mean, uh, at that time, like like I said just a while back, that we had no script, but we definitely had a very Strong storyboard in place, uh, which we were uh, properly following each day. Uh, I mean, instead of scripts, we used to carry our storyboards with us, and in those storyboards, I used to write the dialogues uh, for those scenes and the blocking for those scenes. And An Anand would make his sort of light diagrams and everything, and the camera placement. Uh, so, uh, firstly, it was coming from. Uh, the space itself and how I was sort of uh, being a visual sort of, uh, I, I've also been a photographer, so I've also photographed that space uh, before making the film. So I was, we were responding to those things that how I was sort of seeing the house. Uh, there was certain imagery which were already there uh, in some photographs I had clicked and uh, a video I had shot probably. And then Anand came in much before the shoot uh, for the prep. And we used to spend a lot of time at the house itself and uh, go scene by scene, you know, uh, we would take one scene at a time and then just go in that space and figure out how can we shoot it and where it is sort of placed in the film, how it is. Uh, because I mean, in some way we are visually sort of also uh, moving the narrative forward, uh, whatever narrative there is. Uh, by how much sort of empty space we have to put, uh, what colors, like the whole mission scene. Uh, it was all sort of, you know, uh, planned to the detail in some way, you know. Uh, if Anand would like to add. No, I think that completes the process pretty much uh, because uh, 
that's how we went about it and also i think uh, what helped us very well is that since we knew that it's going to be still images i think storyboarding became really easy for us because we used to just shoot those photographs and then spend time with those images and also the space to understand what we want to arrive to yeah, thanks i just wanted to end by saying that So hello, I'm uh, Anna from Sweden in the very north of Europe. And uh, first of all, I want to thank you for letting us be in this slow space. I think that humanity needs to be in a little more common space where it takes time and goes together, which was very beautiful. <clears throat> and then I also want to say that it's very relatable all over the world, most likely, this phenomena about the house. And that somehow we all end up in a situation where someone in the bigger family needs to take care of the house if they're not going to do so with groups. And so I think that's very um, relatable for many of us outside of India as well. Thank you. जो <laughs> वो एक चीज आपके गांव में शाम के टाइम जैसे आवाज आती है वो जानवर होती है वो बहुत प्यारी लगती थी बस एक चीज ये पूछ रहा था मुझे कि आइडिया कहां से आया आपको क्योंकि ये ऐसी कहानी है कि जो हर घर में हर गांव में हो रही है हर जगह हो रही है लेकिन इस चीज को इतने प्यारे तरीके से इतने नेचुरल तरीके से आपने दिखाया और कुछ भी बनाओ की बनने का इसलिए इसका आइडिया कहां से आया था हां हां मतलब कुछ ही देर पहले मतलब इसका जवाब दिया ही था कि अ दोनों जगह से एक एक जगह है कि मेरा घर है जहां मैं बड़ा हुआ हूं जहां मैंने चीजें देखी हैं और उन्हीं चीजों को मैं दिखाना चाह रहा हूं और किस तरह से दिखाना चाह रहा हूं वो आ रहा है जिस तरह का सिनेमा मैं देखता हूं जिस तरह का सिनेमा मैं बनाना चाहता हूं तो वो दोनों का मतलब एक तरह से साथ आ जाना ना कि आप मैं तो मैं पिछले 4-5 सालों से ग्रामीण घर बनाने से पहले भी जब भी उस घर में जाता था तो किसी कजन से किसी से मैं हमेशा यही बात करता था कि शायद कभी किसी पॉइंट पे आगे 5-6 साल में 8 साल में एक फिल्म यहां बनाएंगे जहां पे यही हो रहा होगा बस बस ये छोटी सी चीज और वो उस टाइम भी पूछते थे कि मतलब पर कैसे क्या क्या बनाओगे और शायद मुझे भी धीरे-धीरे मतलब एक जिसको कहते हैं एक एक्सेप्टेंस आना चीजों का वो भी धीरे-धीरे आया उस घर को ही लेके क्योंकि मैं खुद भी मतलब बहुत बाहर रहा हूं मतलब वहां बड़ा एक तरह से नहीं मैं दरभंगा में भी बड़ा नहीं हुआ Uh, बहुत समय तक बाहर था बाहर से आता था तो मैं एक बाहर वाला ही अभी भी हूं तरीके से तो वो चीजों को एक तरह से एक्सेप्ट करना वो भी धीरे-धीरे आया और जब आया तो साथ में एक लैंग्वेज ढूंढा उसको कहने का uh, जो कि जितने सिनेमा मैंने देखा जो लिटरेचर पढ़ा वो वहां से आ रहा था तो वहीं से नहीं ऐसे डायरेक्टली तो कोई घर का नहीं है मतलब है कजन है मेरे एक कजन है मेरा जो फर्स्ट पार्ट में जो डॉक्टर का बेटा बन के आता है येलो टी शर्ट में है वो मेरी मौसी का बेटा लगता है तो ऐसे एक दो लोग हैं इधर उधर बट मतलब ऐसे कोई डायरेक्ट रिलेटिव नहीं 
बट हाँ अंत में जो जो केयरटेकर हैं वो वही केयरटेकर हैं जो उस घर के सही में केयरटेकर हैं Thank you very much for making this film. Actually, um, this is the second time for me to watch this film. One of my friends who studied audio and music together recommended this film to me. And uh, I actually um, touched, um, they touched my grandparents' house. They changed the uh, house for four times actually because of earthquake and World War II and so on. So I pretty much uh, enjoyed watching the East scene. Um, and also, I'm curious about your next film as well. Where can we get this information? Uh, so the next film is going to be on Mubi, uh, the streaming platform Mubi. Okay, thank you. I I subscribe to this one. Thank you. Okay, anybody else? I think we wrap up then. Thank you so much, Ajay. Thank you, Adam. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Just one second. Just, just. Oh, they fell asleep too, Banshi. एक सेल्फी बनते थे यस यस क्लीन शॉट थैंक यू अच्छा थैंक यू सो मच होप मीट यू सून वीडियो बाय बाय Yeah. Let's do that. Yeah. Okay, I should meet Adam in Bombay. He's in Bombay, na? Yeah. Yeah. Just just. Yeah. We should take one. Uh, we should. Ani nikhe idhar aaye. Ani nikhe kab bhi aaye. Thank you, Divya and Yashika and Umi and everybody, all the volunteers and all the tech. Thank you, Acha. Thank you. We have got the picture. Thank you. Thank you, Achal. Thank you so much. Thank you. See you in the next. Yes. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.